This is Tasha Blasi, integrative fertility coach, patient advocate, and mom to two very expensive children. I went through 10 rounds of IVF, so you will never have to. On this podcast, I will give you the answers to what is keeping you from getting or staying pregnant. This is the FU Project. Fertilitites unite. I am so excited to introduce you to Ashley Frager, who is a holistic wellness expert, homeopathic practitioner, and founder of a clean living brand, Back to Basics. Um, Her shop, Back to Basic dot shop. You're going to hear a lot about that during this talk. And all of our fertilitites have a coupon code, FU Project, to use for it. But we are going to go through Ashley's life how she got to this place and really you know what we need to know about environmental toxins what i always say for ourselves first and then of course how this is affecting our fertility and can potentially affect our children's health so her goal in talking with us was all about empowering us as hopeful women, pregnant women or parents, um, on how to best bring your body back to balance, right? By eliminating toxic hormone disruptive chemicals from your life, okay? And then putting your body into a very effective, efficient state for hormonal balance, for restoring energy, um, and all the things that we need, one, to be happy and healthier ourselves, of course, but especially to create a life, sustain a life, and, and, and for, the, our, uh, for the new moms, you know, these tools will help replace your fears with knowledge on how to keep your children as safe as possible. So I am really, really, really excited to introduce you to Ashley Frager. Yay. Hello, Ashley. How are you? Hi, Tasha. I'm great. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you. I am really, really excited for you to inspire just so many people in, in, these next, in this next hour. You and I met and I've already been pretty informed about endocrine disruptors and things like that. Um, but you just reignited my passion for stop being so stupid, Tasha. <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't use those words though. <laughs> I think, no, that that's what <laughs> that's what I said to myself after I met you, which is because I'm I'm the typical consumer and I'm I'm fine, you know, buying what I need to buy and whatever. But then it was like don't be dumb. And we're going to get to that later. Like the conversation that I had with myself and I'm not trying to get pregnant, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, But before we get there, can you just quickly, just quickly share your journey from, I know, you know, being a cheerleader and what happened and, and how you, how you got to where you are now? Absolutely. So my journey, we'll have to take it back a little bit to when I actually first graduated from college from undergrad and moved down to LA. And a lot of very unexpected symptoms started popping up. I started developing a health condition that was really surprising at the time because I had led a a very healthy, seemingly normal life up until then. But when I first moved to LA about two months into living here, um, all of a sudden I just started getting these weird and very debilitating symptoms seemingly out of the blue. Um, It started with a really um, pressing breathing problem that when I went to the ER, they said wasn't asthma and they couldn't really figure out what it was. So didn't much know what to do with me other than to tell me, come back when it gets worse. The next day it was worse. I was like turning blue. I was getting so little oxygen and this went on for a few days. Then Another symptom popped up where I got vertigo so badly that I had to stop driving and then it got so bad that I couldn't even sit up to eat or have a conversation without being propped up against something just because 
everything was sinning so badly. Um, a couple weeks after that, my legs started giving out to the point where I couldn't walk and had to use a wheelchair if I wanted to go anywhere. And it just kept going on and on like that. It just kept getting worse every day with no answers. And wow. the biggest problem was they couldn't come up with a diagnosis, so they couldn't begin treatment. And when you're in that state of getting worse and worse and worse, they, that's not a good enough answer. <laughs> so uh, I really started to dig in and do my own research and find my own solutions because giving up just wasn't an option at 22 years old for me. And luckily, I had a mom that was right there on the journey beside me doing everything she could to help support and find answers. And that is when I was introduced to homeopathy. And at the time, I had never heard of this system of medicine. I had never tried it. Um, but there was this woman in LA that was practicing, and she was getting known for having these miracle cure cases. And that was enough to um, get me to try at least to talk to her and see what she was doing that was so different from what mm -hmm. I was experiencing in conventional medicine at that time. And so she started treating me, and to your cheerleading incident point, she started unraveling my health history unlike any other specialist I had seen or any other doctor I had seen up until that point. She really started looking at me in a very holistic way and looking at all of my mental, emotional, physical symptoms, no matter where they were in my body, as all being part of the same symptom picture, which to me intuitively makes sense. Like, why aren't we always looking at the human body and <laughs> conditions and diseases in this fashion? But right. it's it's really amazing, as I know you know, um, how infrequently that happens in mm -hmm. the conventional medicine realm. So when she started to do this, she found out that uh, about a year prior, I had had a cheerleading accident where I was dropped on the top of my head um, from a um, stunt right onto the basketball court. And I immediately had a lot of chronic pain issues from it, but didn't really notice much of what else was going on. And what had happened that she unraveled is that I had damaged my pituitary gland, which is our master gland. And that's why a lot of the symptoms were seemingly very random. Um, but simultaneously, I was introducing or had been introduced to so many different um, chemicals, really toxic chemicals, and not through any abnormal activity, but just by normal consumer purchasing. And the toxic load of that combined with that chink in my armor, that head injury, it just was this recipe for disaster in my case, and just had all of my systems kind of spiraling downward without hope for recovery. Um, so by removing some of these really big culprits and correcting uh, the, the effects of the head injury uh, with homeopathy, I became complete. I had one of her, I was one of her miracle cases. Mm -hmm. I, within a week, I was out of the wheelchair. Within a month, all of the really life-threatening symptoms were completely gone. And after a year, I was healthier than I'd been in my whole life. Wow. That's amazing. And, and from there you started, well, you got your doctoral, correct? Um, Studying so this? After working with her, I became so interested in what she was doing um, is that I started learning a lot from her. And at a certain point, she's like, okay, if you're that interested, like you need a formal education in it, go back to school and like figure this out. So I um, started a program to get my doctorate in homeopathy. And um, at the time, I was just so curious and just knew that I never wanted to, again to be in that position where I felt so unempowered in my own health journey. So I thought, okay, well, if, if I learn enough, then I will know enough to take care of myself, my family, my future children. Um, and that was the whole impetus for really learning so much. But then quickly I saw how many people just in my immediate circle needed my help and quickly spun up a full-fledged homeopathic practice that I've been running for 11 years now. Amazing. I love it. And you have 
and and we'll get to more on this and my love of it, but back to basics.shop, back to basics.shop is your online store that sells all of the material that you have specifically researched yourself that also proved to be like hospital grade in terms of effectiveness. And I think that's so important because <laughs> really healthy alternatives get a bad rap for just not working, right? <laughs> yes. yes. So, so yeah, the, and the impetus for Back to Basics really came from my experience in my practice um, in treating my clients. Um, I started to, it, it, this kind of came about without actually searching for it. I just started getting very overwhelmed with clients. Um, once I saw how many people really needed help, I ended up having a wait list of over a year to even talk to me. It just, it got really out of control really fast and not in a good way of, oh, my practice is thriving. It was in a way of, oh my gosh, this information needs to get out there and I'm only one person and I can't do it fast enough. Like each client was taking so much of my my time that I just didn't have um, the bandwidth to be able to touch as many people as I wanted to. So I started trying to be smarter about it and find a way to scale this information. And while homeopathy is so individualized and specific to each client's particular symptoms and how they're exhibiting them, I, I thought there might be a common denominator. So I went into this experiment just with that thought like, okay, let's see if there is some common denominator between all of my clients' cases that we could simplify things and it doesn't have to be so individualized in everyone's case. So I started testing everything to them. And um, I know, Tasha, we've talked about this before, but for everyone else, um, the testing method I use is more unconventional. It's called bioenergetic testing. So um, it requires that I have a DNA sample from my client um, and it can be anything. I choose to use hair that contains DNA and I can test anything against it with this bioenergetic testing. So I can test them for pharmaceutical drugs, for vitamins, for supplements, for foods for the products they're using. So I started doing that with every client I had, like um, seeing, okay, well, is this affecting them negatively or is this affecting them positively or does it have no effect at all? And when I started doing this with client after client, I started to see this pattern of there being particular chemicals that are very commonplace that we're exposed to very frequently, if not daily, that were toxic across the board that everyone was having a negative response to. It wasn't like, oh, this person just has a sensitivity to organic lavender oil, but this person doesn't. It was like this one, this class of chemicals that I started um, compiling that just everyone across the board was being negatively affected by and everyone was having slightly different symptoms but there were certain there were enough cases that i could find these through lines of like okay these are the symptoms that this chemical causes but then you'd have these outliers of like whoa that's of like my left eyelid twitches after I'm exposed to this, like seemingly very random symptoms too. Mm -hmm. So I just started compiling all of this data and uh, putting it together in a way that um, uh, how, how they could digest it, I figured was through a storefront where everything that we carried did not contain any of these um, toxic chemicals that I was finding to be so detrimental to people's health. Yes. And, and that's the back to basic start shop. And if anybody uses that, use my coupon code FU project, but we're going to get to more of that later because there's a couple of products in there that I'm officially obsessed with. And I'll tell you <laughs> the funny ways that I've used them, <laughs> but let's, let's talk about, as you know, my audience is, is trying to conceive. And I think that the signs that come up that you are what I call um, needing space. So I, I say, you know, the four things that you need to create a baby, if using fertility treatments is science, otherwise it's biology, enough space, energy, and then the right support. Space is the decluttering process because as you know, if your body is trying to get rid of a lot of toxins, let's say mental or physical, 
um, all of your hormones and energy is going to be shifted towards getting rid of that and your reproductive system and typically your digestive system is kind of left compromised because you don't need any of your reproductive organs to survive. Exactly. So along those ways, like, did you have a lot of clients that could not get pregnant when, you know, when they found you? I did. Yes. And it was funny for a while. Um, people would call me and be like, I hear you're a fertility doctor. I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm actually not at all. I'm just looking at things a little differently. And f your fertility is one of the things that improves when we approach it in this way. Right. So, uh, and, and just to stop there, because I think this is so important because you kind of mentioned this, but I just want to, I would just want to say this whenever you have ailments, like fertility issues, like a heart condition, like what, what you were experiencing, actually, that put you in a wheelchair. You have to look at, was I born with this? And if the answer is no, if I was not born with this defect, that's where it's such a miss to not treat the whole body, to not move to holistic health, because, because the doctors are amazing at treating that organ system, mm -hmm. but how that got there had nothing to do with that organ system. Exactly. So I'm always looking at the root cause of the problem or the symptom rather than how do we just get rid of this symptom? Because I don't think symptoms are a bad thing. They're actually just our body waving a little red flag, like over here, pay attention right. to this. Like this right. is what's wrong. I'm giving you all the signs you need. But so often we're just so eager to get rid of that symptom that we're not looking at why the symptom is there in the first place. Mm -hmm. So okay. So how did you discover the link between the, the the infertility that your clients were experiencing and the and the chemicals they were exposed to? Yes. Yeah, so that was so eye opening. Like the first case I had where I was really seeing this clear link, I was like, how can this be? Like these products are on our shelves. Like somebody has to be regulating them. Right. Like, I feel like that's an assumption that most of us have. Like if we are able to buy them, there has to be some government agency or somebody looking out for us to know that we're not putting toxic things in on and around our bodies. But that is so, so sadly, not the case. Um, so when I started discovering this and this link, I started seeing that um, there, there are particular chemicals and parabens and phthalates are definitely in this camp. They're, they're, they're big culprits um, for this, but they will disrupt the endocrine system in a way that these chemicals will either artificially mimic a particular hormone, or they will block the receptors, block your endocrine receptors from accepting your body's natural hormones. So that'll make your body think that, oh, I don't have any of that hormone. Or if it's artificially manufactured, then it'll think that there's more than what you actually have. And it'll get it will block those receptors anyway, just because it's plugging up the channels. So your actual hormones can't get in there to those receptors. So with all of that, like there's there's one approach where you could, uh, you're, if you think the body isn't getting a particular hormone, you could flood it with it artificially with uh, through um, pharmaceutical means, or you could just take out, remove what is causing this problem, this misinformation, this miscommunication in our bodies in the first place, and then our body will correct itself. It'll come back into homeostasis on its own. So I prefer the second approach just because I firmly believe that our bodies are highly intelligent systems and we can never tweak them as much as, as perfectly as it can itself. So I'm of the approach that we just give our bodies the best fighting chance that we can to be able to thrive. So the part of that is creating an environment where we're not constantly taxing our systems, especially not with endocrine disrupting chemicals. Right, right. And, and I think it's always important to talk about, you know, this is for overall health, wellness, and, and balance that will affect your moods. Um, your stress levels and how you look, how you feel, how happy you can actually be, because because it can block that. Um, and of course, 
the kind of the result of all that is going to be your fertility. So, you know, one of the one of the questions are that, that people want to know is like, well, is this going to affect my ability to to get pregnant and to conceive? And I mean, I would love for you to answer that. My answer would be yes. And more importantly, this is about you. This, 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 your fertility will come be the best, healthiest, happiest, calmest you first for yourself, for your partner. And then of course, for your child, that's, that's going to cause a lot of other things to show up. So. Absolutely. And when you're looking at the other side of it too, with your partner, like their endocrine system, their male hormones are also being affected by this environment. So it's all the way around. And I mean, I, I've seen so many different symptoms and diseases develop from exposure to these chemicals. And some people they think that they're not affected by it because they don't um, readily show surface level symptoms in direct response to it. Like I, I know people that can be exposed to a toxic candle and start sneezing immediately or get an instant migraine. And then there's other people that could sit in the room with it for days and seemingly Mm. not have any symptoms towards it. But that's not necessarily true. It's affecting that person just as much as the person sneezing or with the instant migraine. It's just Mm -hmm. affecting them on a different level and in a different way. So like in homeopathy, where we're looking at everyone being so individualized and and expressing things in such a different way. Um, the same goes with chemical reactions. Like just because you're not instantly sneezing does not mean that it's not getting um, to your major organs, especially the filtration organs, like your liver and kidneys, and having a more long-term effect there. So, right. It may not be as noticeable, but exactly. a, a chem, you know, a toxic chemical is a toxic chemical. Period. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's just a matter of your genetics or how things show up but it is it is affecting your organ systems it may just not be as obvious yes and uh, you know we you, you mentioned food earlier and that was actually something that i cuz i saw a lot of chemicals come up in our food chain as well when i would test people for food but Uh, the reason I didn't go that route is for one, I feel like a lot of people are doing a really great job of educating and putting good information out about that. And I feel like the swing has already shifted in that direction of people moving towards food that's organic and not treated with hormones and like rebelling against the pesticides and all of that. But not enough people are looking at the products, which I mean, I think are equally, if not more important with food, at least we have stomach acid to give us a fighting chance to fight some of that stuff off. But when you're putting some of these products directly onto your skin, that is just going straight into your bloodstream. And if you haven't heard it before, your skin is your biggest organ and it absorbs things. It is not this impervious layer that's like plastic that won't let anything in. Like things go straight into our blood and don't really get filtered until it hits a major organ. So uh, absorbing chemicals in that fashion or breathing them in from air fresheners or candles or um, cleaners that become airborne, all of that is is such an important thing to look at in our lives and make sure we're not putting in all these toxins into our bodies in those fashions. Yes. And, and you, I think the, and you need to tell me how deep you'll go with this. Cause I know you and I have talked about like different companies <laughs> and stuff. So you tell me what you're comfortable with, but I think the problem is because this was me, I am all organic, non-toxic, you know, um, I, I'm so aware of that yet the company still fooled me. Mm-hmm. And, and it wasn't until I had a very in-depth conversation with you of you know, what to look for and things where I was like, but I was paying more for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for non-toxic. And what you're telling me is how they can hide the toxins. Just like this, this, this so goes back to the food industry, which is, but I'm not buying anything with sugar in it. Oh, but there's 60 different names for mm-hmm. sugar. And 
if it's, you know, not all sugar has to be reported. So unless it's naturally occurring sugar, it actually doesn't even have to go on the packaging. And it's like, well, how is that possible? Well, it comes down to money, right? The first sugar industry is giving both sides of, of politics a lot of money. But so, so same thing with the products is why yeah, don't you analogy, teach us? Yeah. yeah, the analogy is, is perfect because the exact same thing is happening in the products industry. A great example is fragrance. This is yes. an ingredient that we ban from our company. We ban from our shelves like no other. And the reason for this is because they can hide so many different toxic chemicals under that one name. Right. So fragrance, you're thinking, oh, it's just like the essential oils that make it smell good or the botanical extracts that make it this product smell nice. But really what's happening is that to make that smell consistent from batch to batch, product to product, they're making a synthetic blend of it. Now that synthetic blend, in order to stay consistent and to be manufactured very cheaply, is made out of a lot of different toxic chemicals, many of which are carcinogenic, uh, endocrine disruptors, um, linked to organ toxicity, and they don't have to report it. This is just insane. And uh, and so like okay, if, if a product says it's paraben-free, right? That's a, that's a new big one that people are, you know, mm-hmm. PPA-free, paraben-free, but let's go with paraben-free. If they then just report fragrance, can there be parabens in that fragrance? Yes. So that's why that claim of it being paraben-free, can, you can just throw out the window if you see the word fragrance in their ingredients list. Okay, um, that's super it, helpful. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it means there's not a paraben that they inserted by itself, but that that ingredient can still be in there hiding under the word fragrance. And, right. and there are a lot of phthalates wrapped into fragrance, so many petrochemicals, it's essentially just like breathing in um, crude oil or slathering it on your body. Yeah, fragrance, it's I challenge you today to go look at all of your products and make a pile of of all of the products that have the word fragrance mm-hmm. in the ingredients list. I think it'll astonish you how much it's out there. And yeah. I mean, it's not that our products don't have amazing smells to it. It's just we are so careful about knowing where that manufacturer sourced their fragrance from, that it was from a nature-made botanical source, that it's not overly processed, so it's turned into a chemical along the way. Uh, Another big thing you're seeing right now that a lot of faux green or faux natural companies are using is the word natural fragrance. So that makes people think, oh, that's the safe version of the synthetic fragrance. It's not necessarily true. For one, fragrance, um, because of this fragrance loophole, it's <laughs> it's a self-regulated term. So the companies that are manufacturing just need to self-report on it. So they just need to tell you, oh yes, our natural fragrance comes from this plant. No one's looking at if that's true or not. They might not even know if it's true or not because they don't really know where they've sourced it from. Mm. So <laughs> that's like in the food industry, natural flavorings. Whenever I see exactly that, I like that. That's, that's terrible. Whenever yeah. I see natural flavorings, I know they can put whatever they want in that term. Yeah. Exactly. It's the exact same thing. Amazing. Um, and, and that's why, you know, after, after we met, I went into my, and, and you were also telling me, and we're going to get to kind of like, products and which ones to swap out first and why. But I know one of the key things you told me is anytime something's heated up, so, Mm -hmm. you know, in a diffuser, in your shower, you have to be especially careful because you're putting it on your body and you're breathing it into your body. Um, And I remember like, if I showed you this packaging, it was like, love planet organic like was all over this packaging i know it's and it was like about now. <laughs> like how do you save the planet you buy this product that is just you know like oh my gosh and sure enough like i look on the back of it and it's like fragrance and i'm like no and it and it was it was very fragrant and so i put that away 
And yeah, but <laughs> the marketing tactics they use, and you'll find a lot of these um, faux natural companies now, um, what they do is they try and focus on all of the things that they've taken out of the product, but trying to divert your attention from what's actually in it. And then just like to your point about food, they'll use like misnomers or they'll say, um, they don't necessarily have to tell you that certain things are in there because um, like one one ingredient, for example, 1,4-dioxane, this is an extremely toxic ingredient linked to reproductive product problems, um, uh, carcinogenic, and they don't have to tell you that it's actually in the product because it's what they call an unintended byproduct. It got made in the manufacturing process, either by combining ingredients together or chemically treating certain ingredients. And this chemical, 1,4-dioxane, is made that way. They didn't take 1,4-dioxane and put it in there, so then they don't have to put it on the ingredients list, even though it's in there. <laughs> Tell me how much sense that makes. <laughs> I, know, I know. I think, yeah, it's... And and this is where, this is where, you know, people, <laughs> people will say to me, like, I just wish I didn't know, right? Now I need to throw out all my stuff. <laughs> and honestly, that's what I thought, like, oh, Ashley, now, now I need to throw out all my stuff. But, but, you know, I, I can be, I can be quite frugal about things, not always, but I, I can be. And when I noticed because what 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 I thought was probably what most people are thinking. Okay, once I get through all my laundry detergent, all my soaps, all this, then I'll switch over. And and that was my like, don't be dumb moment. You know, once you are blessed to be educated about something, just cut the cord and and do your best. And what I have found, because what I just did is I, I gathered all of my, I almost took a picture for you, Ashley, but I, wish you I, would I, I know, that. then I got lazy because I, because I got a big box from you and mm -hmm. then I gathered all of my old ones and I, and, and your, you know, your, the products from back to basic stock shop um, are just, just so much more beautiful looking as well. But anyway, <laughs> I just got lazy and I didn't, but I, I just said, you know what? I don't need to throw out these other products, right? So that's like my kind of way of being like, okay, I'm not wasting money. If I have someone come over that's a guest, I'll give them that soap. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll poison them instead. <laughs> so they, yeah, they can get that soap, not me. So don't um, go visit Tasha. <laughs> don't, if you are a house guest. <laughs> but I was like, so, and, and then it was like, well, but this this isn't more money because i am i am using so much less of this and i don't smell things i'm very sensitive to smell um it you just feel so much better and healthier because it is and you know for a while like my 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 husband accidentally bought um Dish, dishwasher soap that was that was fragrance because it was one of those faux what do you call them faux I call them faux natural faux natural faux okay it was faux natural <laughs> I always bought the fragrance free but he just didn't know to and he bought the faux natural but it was with fragrance but it was the faux natural so he thought he was doing a great job which he mm -hmm. was um, and I could taste it and this was before I met you and I was like oh my gosh I cannot eat anything that in a dish that has been washed with this uh, but when and once I switched everything over everything works so well. I have to tell you like, and, and see, now I'm going to keep on going on, but let me just take a second. Like, okay, the, your, um, cleaner than clean, that's a spray. And this is when, you know, I was talking to you about, like, I had my office. I'm like, I just need want like an air freshener, you know, um, if I don't open the door, I don't have windows that open. And you're like, you don't need an air freshener. You just do back to do, just do the cleaner than clean because it's, it kills germs. So killing germs will freshen the air. Plus it has a nice scent to it uh, and, and it's hospital grade. So I use that on like everything, not only for like a room spray, but to clean everything. But here's my other trick with this, Ashley, which you need to tell your people. <laughs> my son, my 10 year old son had like the stinkiest shoes. And I was like, oh, Hudson, like what is... <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, what is going on here? You know, he's like, I know mom, my socks. 
And you can't really get rid of that odor unless you put in a lot of toxic stuff. And all I did, because he had to wear the shoes, I put like two sprays of your cleaner than clean in his mm -hmm. shoes and it immediately eliminated foot odor from his sneakers. Oh yeah, that, that stuff is our wonder product. I've had moms um, use it on mattresses when they have a pee accident and yep. completely get rid of not only the stain, but the color, the odor, and it's cleaned too. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I don't dry clean my clothes anymore. I use it um, for my clothes to completely clean them without having to use toxic chemicals. You can spray it on um, soft fabrics in the air. Um, we put it in a diffuser and it will clean your air better than any air purifier. Yeah, the, the possibilities are endless. I know yes. people that spray it straight on their dog, their stinky dogs. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'll just try yeah. that on Coco. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, for anyone that hasn't tried it, like we're we're not being negligent by spraying a supposed cleaning and deodorizing product directly onto humans or animals, <laughs> um, because it's completely safe. So yeah. uh, the active ingredient is actually one that our bodies make. So when we have a cold, a flu, an infection, I know everyone's getting a little hyped up over the coronavirus right now. Mm -hmm. um, when, whenever we have some type of invader into our body, our white blood cells start making this ingredient. It starts pumping it out as an immune system response to fight it. And that's what we've bottled. So um, you, can, you can also see it made in nature when lightning hits the ocean. For an instant, this ingredient, hypochlorous acid, is made, but then it dissipates. Um, so we've just managed to bottle that. So it's completely safe for your, us to be around. It's almost even like an immune system boost um, to have more of this around and in our systems. Um, but it is highly, highly effective but also so safe. <laughs> I mean, talk about lightning in a bottle. I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so if, I, I have a couple more questions for you, but mm -hmm. if you, oh, and the other thing, oh, oh, the other thing I was going to tell you was, um, you know, like the, I got the laundry detergent and one of, and I was like, oh, damn it, like it's this little bag and I'm like, and I mean, I didn't, I don't, I, it wasn't expensive, but I was like, oh, this little bag is going to go so fast but you need like a teaspoon. And I was like, that's, that's not possible, but it is all my clothes yeah. are very clean it and is you just need so concentrated. Yeah, I've been using so little, but my, one of my other stories of like a week ago is Mila, my little girl, she got hit in the, we were at Hudson's basketball game and she got hit in the face with the basketball, not from oh. the game, but like, I don't know, the kids were playing and she comes over to me. Cause you know, she just got a, basketball in her face, you know, <laughs> and she was laying down. And then I, I started just like rubbing her hair back. And all of a sudden I noticed wetness and I looked down and she has a bloody nose. Oh. And, and so she like grabs me and she's now like scared. So she's in my shirt. Right. So I look like I, I've just been after a murder scene victim, my white Aloha shirt that I just had gotten from Hawaii was just covered in blood. And it was like, who cares? Right. You're daughter needs you, but I used your peroxide oh, on yeah. that. What is that called? The peroxide? Um, um the essential oxygen peroxide. Yeah. Yes. It's made without any toxic stabilizers. So it's different from the brown bottle hydrogen peroxide you find in most drugstores. Okay. So anyway, I, like every mom was like, Oh, that was a nice shirt. I'm like, I know who cares, you know, whatever. <laughs> And I, saved it. <laughs> I, I just put it in there because I don't know. I'm like, all of Ashley's stuff works so well. I wonder if this, a, and literally there's nothing. See, I was excited to have to go back to Hawaii to get a new shirt, but uh, <laughs> my shirt's totally fine. Um, cleaner than clean will work for that too. Oh, uh, like stain removal? Yeah, we actually did not know that it could remove stains when we first started bottling it. That's why it isn't on the label anywhere. But we've gotten so many customer reports of like the craziest stains you can imagine being lifted with cleaner than clean. Okay, we're going to do like a product like top five at the end, but I want to get into a little bit more about hormones and disruptors because I think when 
Like you must work with a lot of people with thyroid issues. I do. Yeah. Because I think that is, when you talk about the alarm, that is one of those hormones where that's just an alarm system. Your thyroid's fine. It's just an alarm system that other things are really off. Mm -hmm. So have you seen through just putting the right chemicals or, or not putting the wrong chemicals in your body, people's thyroids heal without the medication or is it just making it less medication or what's happening there? I've seen running through some of my cases in my head right now. I've, I've seen a, a very, very severe hypothyroid case be alleviated by switching out products and homeopathic treatment at the same time. So I can't say which was more effective. I really think it was a combination of, of the two. But I've seen so many different symptoms and diseases be alleviated just by product swapping alone. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I, I told you this before, but as I was going along in my practice, I started realizing that I was getting into a, a pattern with a lot of clients where we would start homeopathic treatment right away. And then we would spend like this month to two months of um, me finding what remedy they needed, them getting better, and then falling back into the same patterns and going back and forth on this for a month or two. And then me realizing, oh, it's this product and that product that's causing this. Let's remove that. And then their treatment would take off and work for them consistently. So after making that mistake enough times, I started requiring all of my new clients to do like this home consultation where they would swap out their products first before anything to give us a clean slate mm -hmm. to move forward with the homeopathic treatment. And I mm -hmm. can't tell you how many clients didn't even need homeopathic treatment after that. Oh, wow. So it was just the product swaps alone and their symptoms were alleviated. I'm like, you don't need my help beyond this. Yeah. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was just it was just your laundry detergent causing the the chronic rash on the back of your neck. Or I mean, I it's really amazing to me how much your emotional and mentals can get wrapped up into this as well. Um, I had someone that was um, suicidal that when he first came to me and we figured out that it was his dryer sheets that was causing this like chemical reaction in him that would cause Oh and just God. removing, I mean, how simple of a switch is that? Like just throw away the dryer sheets. Like, yeah. So it seems so easy, but if you didn't know, you could just be searching forever and you could be blaming a million different things or, you know, feel like you have to go on an antidepressant or whatever else. But really it was just that one swap that fixed everything. Wow. And, and that's where I, we, you know, when I mentioned, and I'll repeat myself, getting your health and your hormones as balanced as possible really affect your mood and your mm -hmm. happiness. And for me, Absolutely. if you don't do those foundational things for restoring energy and detoxing, it is impossible for you to be truly joyously happy. It's almost mm -hmm. like a fight to try to remind yourself or to get to that happiness and there are ways to for do sure. it, but it's so much effort versus if you take care of those foundational things that's imbalancing your hormones to begin with and you really work on energy rest restorative practices, which those two absolutely go together, that's, that's where so many of the things where we'd say, oh, well, I'm depressed because, I'm anxious because, but you're really digging a hole if you also have all of these kind of toxics, to toxins in the mix mm -hmm. that you have, that your body who wants to do best by you is fighting every day, all day long. Yeah, it's just an uphill battle at that point. And I look at so many people that are just inundated with it day in and day out. It's like their bodies never get a break from it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's in your 
in your sheets as you're sleeping. It's on your clothes as you go out into the world. You get into your car and there's air fresheners in there. You get to your place of work and they have all kinds of chemicals and air fresheners being sprayed around in there. It's like, when do you get any time for your body to just have a neutral zone of not being bombarded by things that it's having to work through and process and eliminate and detox? Like it's a lot of work for our bodies to have to do that all the time and then it doesn't give it enough time, energy, and resources to work on what you want it to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, so a few things. One, I want to talk about what, what products that people should swap out first, especially new moms, women trying to conceive, but really just anybody. Mm -hmm. And then I want to talk about, and then I want to talk about when the the best way for anybody in any country to determine what products they should use or not. And I know that your website helps with both these. So yeah, why don't we start with the best products that any mom should swap off if they're a new mom or trying to conceive? Sure. So you you mentioned earlier your approach of eliminating everything instead of like, let's use it up. And I so encourage everyone to do that with the products you're swapping out because a lot of these chemicals bioaccumulate and it's it's not like oh i i'm just being exposed to it and i've been exposed for to it for a long time and my body knows how to deal with it it's no you keep creating more and more of a toxic load and you can hit a threshold and that's when you can start exhibiting much more severe symptoms mm -hmm. so with these chemicals that don't really get purged from our body like the you're just creating more and more of that toxic load. It's better to just like, okay, the damage is done. Now stop, <laughs> throw it away and don't get yourself closer to that threshold. With that being said, the three products or the categories of products that I really recommend swapping out first. Um, I, if I'm ever asked this question, and if I only get one, I always say laundry detergent, number one. Um, that is because some of the most toxic chemicals in our house are in laundry detergent. Um, that ingredient I was talking about earlier, 1,4-dioxane, it is in most conventional laundry detergents, some natural laundry and it's that one that's gonna hit um, reproductive activities, um, functions. It's going to be a carcinogenic, like it is just a nasty one. And the exposure level that we have to it is just so high. If you're running your washer and dryer in your house, you're creating indoor air pollution. So you're breathing in those chemicals and for a long mm. period of time, um, you are putting it into the sheets that that you're sleeping on and in, into the clothes that you're wearing, um, into your underwear. I can't tell you how many cases of um, urinary tract infections I have seen clear up just by swapping out laundry detergent. Um, yeah. That is so many chemicals just like going right up into there that will cause those like bladder infection type symptoms. And even if you go out into nature, you're on a hike and in fresh air, you're still bringing all those chemicals with you. So it's like you never get a break for it if you're using toxic laundry detergent. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Um, and, and just to stop there, really quickly, isn't the, the, the suds that I bought from you, Molly's suds, wasn't that, didn't she have a crazy story about why she started that? She did. So many of the founders that of the brands that we work with have such inspiring stories. Hers is definitely one of them. Um, she uh, was pregnant and she actually had a stillbirth and they attributed it to the laundry detergent she was using. And she turned that very tragic story into a company to help other people. She really puts a lot of focus on new moms or moms trying to conceive um, to make sure that they're not using toxic laundry products like she was. Mm, 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 so she okay. is very, very dedicated to super clean ingredients. And like you've seen, they actually work too. That's another big concept with our store. Like, I yes, first and, for, first and foremost, I care that the ingredients are clean, but it also has to work. Like no one's going to use this natural stuff if it doesn't work as well as the conventional. So right. we make sure to test all of our products for efficacy as well, including our, our skincare and, you know, if people, 
people think that, oh, I can only get the effects I want for anti-aging with the, all these chemicals. It's not true. Some of the natural stuff does it so much better. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and because you need less and you can use one product for so many things, that's where there are true cost savings as well. Okay, so laundry detergent, what were the other two you're gonna mention? So the second one is air fresheners or anything of the sort, candles, plugins, any of those that have just got to go. Those type of chemicals where they're airborne, they permeate everything. Um, so many people have become desensitized, their sense of sn smell. It's like they can't even smell it anymore. That's why they keep needing more and more. They, you know, one plug in isn't good enough anymore. They need five in the same room. And to anyone else that is not used to smelling that, it smells like fragrance overload. But to the person smelling it all the time, it's like their sense of smell is deadened. Um, I can't tell you how many of our customers come back to me and they're like, oh my gosh, I can smell now. <laughs> Like, oh my god taste everything <laughs> like I can smell everything and people always joke that I have the most heightened sense of smell out of anyone they've ever met and it's just because I'm not around all of the toxic chemical smells all of the time so yeah this is something that I can even smell it if I go into a friend's house that's been burning a candle or has a plug-in mm -hmm. I can smell it on my skin and on my clothes when I wow. leave so that shows you it it's getting transferred onto you. It is being carried with you. Like yeah. if I go somewhere that's very fragrant, I shower the second I get home because I know my skin's just absorbing all of those chemicals. Wow. So just imagine what it's doing if it's in your own home. Yeah. And um, we need to tell the Uber drivers to cut oh, it right? out. Oh my with, gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, it's like my nose is on fire with those you know, whatever air fresheners, it burns, it literally I, burns the hairs in my nose. <laughs> I know. And I just got back from Europe and so I was in and out of a million different Ubers, but everyone keeps talking about how the EU is doing so much better. They've banned thousands of chemicals and the US has only banned 11. And I'm sorry, they still have so many toxic things because they're still fragrancing up everything just like we are. And mm -hmm. yes, it's kind of like what I was saying with the faux natural companies. Yes, they've removed some, but we also need to concentrate on what is still there because there's still mm -hmm. a lot of toxic things there yeah. too. Okay, and what would be the third thing? Um, the third is what you mentioned earlier, it's kind of a product category, not necessarily one thing. It's anything that you heat up. Mm. So um, anything that you're going to use in the shower, it's hitting that hot water and getting heated up. So your shampoos, conditioners, body washes, all of that, you're, it actually- But also like dish soap, because you use that with hot water and obviously laundry soap, that's hot water. Mm -hmm. And um, what the dishwasher gel or detergent that you put into your automatic dishwasher, um, a candle when you light it. Um, so what actually happens is, that the chemical structure changes when you heat something up or burn it, and it actually makes our bodies absorb it faster. That's why it's so much more dangerous. Wow, such good stuff, such good stuff. And so now let's talk about, you know, if you're, if you're in the U.S., I know you're working on the U.K. I don't know if you are in Canada yet, but I know if you're in the U.S., you can go to Back to Basics Stop Shop use the coupon code FU project for a discount. Mm -hmm. And, and that will ensure you don't have to think twice about it, right? You know, everything on that site is not only high, high, high grade in terms of it works amazingly well, but there are absolutely no chemicals. You don't have to think about it. And that's what I love about your shop. I just, now I know go there and you have a whole baby section, which is great, which of course, now I'm like, what did I do to my children all those years? <laughs> they, they survived. It's okay. Just I know. Them still, from now. I know. <laughs> I just, you um, know, there has to be something that I have to, you know, um, up over right, be like, oh, uh, uh, the whites. No, um, <laughs> no, but actually I would use a natural, I would use natural stuff. It just wouldn't work that well, but I'd still use it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know what company I'm talking about. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so so okay, for all of the all of my loves in the UK, um, and just you know, this stuff is not maybe available to them. Tell me 
what anybody can do to ensure that they are using clean and safe ingredients. Now, I know your website, which is, again, back to basics chop, has a whole list of chemicals. But let's say they're like me and super lazy about this. And I just need convenience. Like, but, but maybe that's just not possible. But like, <laughs> how can you easily know that something you're about to pick up should or should not be purchased? So that was kind of the sticking point for me. And the reason why I felt that I needed to open Back to Basics is because there sadly isn't just a clear cut answer. Like a lot of the products that I vet, the ingredients lists can sometimes look safe, but they're using um, tricky names or they um, actually are sourcing an ingredient that could be clean poorly so that it gets diluted somewhere along the supply chain. So we check for all of that with our manufacturers. We like dive into the nitty gritty. And another thing to that point is um, there are certain brands we carry that you'll see we only have part of their product line. And the reason for that is usually that other products from that company aren't as clean. They have some of the banned ingredients in those other products, but we love the other clean products so much that we'll carry just those. So don't make the assumption if you see something, a brand on our site, um, if you see it and it looks and you you want to buy another one of their products somewhere else, just make sure that the ingredients are actually clean because it doesn't mean just because we carry one thing from a brand that we approve of that brand okay. um, carte blanche, you know. Um, but as far as people that cannot use our site, yes, we have um, the our banned ingredients list, which you can look at. We also have um, a book that we recommend that was written like over a decade ago, maybe more, 15 years ago, um, but nothing has actually changed about the ingredients or the laws, so <laughs> the book is still very relevant. It's called No More Dirty Looks. It doesn't focus as much on the cleaning products and those ingredients, but it does on the cosmetics and things we put on our body. Mm -hmm. So our banned ingredients list is very similar to theirs. Um, we have a few more on there, but um, that would give you a good starting point of knowing why um, why those ingredients are harmful. And um, as far as people in other countries go, that it, it, it does take a lot of legwork. And sometimes, yeah, it does take reaching out to these brands to actually check with them to make sure to ask like the hard hitting questions and make sure they're actually using clean ingredients. Um, but yeah, starting with reading the ingredients labels and checking it against our list, that would be my first recommendation. Um, definitely avoiding anything with fragrance, um, trying to opt for unscented or um, fragrance free options. Um, actually, I should make the distinction. Unscented usually just means you can't smell the scent. It doesn't mean that the chemicals aren't there with, it's not chemical free. Okay. So, so what happens sometimes is, um, let's say a particular laundry brand has their detergent and they want to make a sensitive version of it where you can't smell the scent. They will take their normal formula, add another chemical that is called a masking agent that will make it so you can't smell what's in their original product and pass it off as sensitive or unscented. So it actually oh, wow. just has more chemicals in it. <laughs> so it's actually more chemicals. Exactly. Oh my watch God. out for those. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sorry that there isn't an a simpler and easier solution for people that can't shop directly from us, but, um, well, and that's it, because there's not money in what you do. Yes. <laughs> you know, nobody's, nobody's funding you. And that's where, you know, I know the phrase vote with your dollars keeps on coming up a lot, but you, you know, you are what your mission is up against just 
a bazillion companies with a quadrillion billion dollars. I know that's a real number. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, and that's why, like, how unfortunate, but I think people need to understand how unfortunate it is that it's really hard to know what's bad for you. And that's done very intentionally. And that's where the secret ingredients comes in and the hidden this and the chemical that masks this so they can call it this. Like, they have a lot more money than Ashley does. So that's, that's how they can do that. And, yeah. and people like Ashley or the Molly Suds or the other, you know, the other um, brands that are, that are really trying to do this right, we, 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 they might be a little bit more expensive because it's, it's harder to produce and it might be definitely less known, but that's where we need to, as I said to myself, don't be stupid, Tasha. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, really vote with our dollars and turn it around for our health and happiness. And of course, um, our children as well. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, we do all of our research and testing internally. So that that takes a lot of our time and resources as well. And yeah, we try and keep all of our prices as competitive as possible so that, I mean, I I, it's not about spending the most for a product. It's really just making sure that you're getting the best for you and your family. Um, so we really try, like if something is very expensive on our site, it's because those ingredients were just really expensive that made it. it and I don't carry things that um, are expensive just for the sake of being expensive. If it is, it's because it's worth it. <laughs> wow, good. Um, That's good to know. Yeah, because I mean, especially when you get into some of the skin skincare stuff, um, you could spend a fortune on skincare. And uh, there are some things that I'm like, what's the point? Like, this doesn't work any better than this $20 bottle of oil, you know? Right, right. So You're like, it, it's olive oil in it. That's it, the ingredient or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we try and be really conscious of that too. And we really try and help our customers out where we can. We offer free shipping over 50 $59. That means we pay for your shipping, not the post office just gives it to us for free over that price. <laughs> so yeah, we really do try and help out even though um, it's hard to keep up with Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Prime free shipping. I'm a sucker for it too. So <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and I thank you for offering um, the FU project a discount. I know we, oh, we had to have that conversation. You're like, there's very little profit margins in what I do, <laughs> but you still were able able to, you know, um, give a discount code and that, that, well, that means I, a lot. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's so important, especially for your clients and your community to make the switch. So I'm happy to help where we can. And first and foremost, we just want to be a resource for everyone. So if you ever have any questions, like please reach out the, um, on our Instagram channel, we really try and put out a lot of information, try and pop on there at least once a week to do an informational video, just to teach you more and give you more tips. That's something that would be a really good tool for anyone outside of the U S too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And that's back to basics underscore shop. Yep. Yep. Well, this is awesome. And I just want to, I would just want to slip in there that Ashley and I had a big conversation about essential oils and you guys need to be really careful about those as well. Cause she did her own research there are don't consume them. Please just don't consume them. There are synthetics in them. And yes, even for those two very, very popular brands that say it's therapeutic grade. So mm -hmm. I just had to add that in as well. Thank you. Um, Cause you know, I know that you and I can't share every conversation that we have. Exactly. But, One um, day we'll be able to. But. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Uh, but you, you're fighting them pretty hard. I'm pretty proud of you for that. Oh, um, trying. <laughs> So anyway, thank you so, so much, Ashley. Oh, thank you for working with my, uh, my fertilitites within the FU project workshop. We, you know, they, it just really means a lot that we have you on our, on our side to, to help us move forward. And thank you for what you do. Um, you are a gift and such a special resource and yes, I'm, I'm really grateful that I met you. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Tasha. Same to you. All right. Well, Back to basics.shop, coupon code FU Project Workshop. No, excuse me, coupon code FU Project. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, go get shopping.
right? Be, jo join me in, in my, in, in, <laughs> in switching it out and spray that. Almost tried everything on the store. So, <laughs> oh, there's still, there's still places to go. Trust me. Trust me. We'll keep it fresh for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I haven't even gotten into the cosmetic stuff. Please. We're, we're just starting. So thank you. advice and adventures, please visit TashaBlasi.com. Sending you thanks and love always.